In this video, we're gonna talk about gun sticker spawns, recovery takes a twisted turn. You will see what I mean by the end of this issue. Alrighty then, this is a comic book review of Gunslinger Spawn, issue number 36, brought to you by Rated Comics. Let's get to it. So previously in Gunslinger Spawn, as Javier Gunslinger Spawn recoups from his injuries in the hospital, questions about his past begin to arise. So in Guyana, South Africa, we take the story back now and we're going to go forward with it. His father, who we know at the end of issue number 35, announces himself when he sees his son on TV, on the news, and no one can identify him. So now he makes his calls to his government contacts and he wants him out, even if they mean they have to move heaven and earth, literally and figuratively speaking, to get his son out of custody. And people are telling him he was caught shooting cops. I don't think this be that easy you know because you know how it is when you shoot cops they want some justice you know what i mean and this guy his father's like american officials like access they want to come into this country again they'll fix this so do your job brother is like okay look you could make all the threats you want we don't take kindly the threats but you know what you're asking is a lot and it ain't gonna happen but i will pass your message along so to speak but it turns out he gets pissed because the administration is about to sign their business treaty with their side and potus wants guyana Keep in mind, Gunslinger Spawn's father is the president of Guyana to be a part of the Southern Coalition. So now they have leverage. So later on, this guy goes to Joel's office, who's another high-ranking political behind-the-scenes figure or whatnot. And she's like, man, you putting this file on my desk, and now this high-level contact whose son happens to be the shooter, he wants him out? Isn't his brother still on the top of the news? Yep, he is. I'm seeing it loud and clear. So now the question is, who's going to break it to the administration? So meanwhile in the hospital, Javier Gunsticker Spawn is just laying down. The doctors can't understand how he has all those scars outside of his body, but internally his organs are just fine. They don't know. But Gunsticker Spawn knows because he had healing factors back then. So he tells him, well, you know, I can tell you, but let's just say as he relives his glorious healing days in the past, that he led a hard life, a very tough life. And the doctors are like, that's it? That's all you're going to tell us? And Gunsick responds like, yep, that's it. That's all you're going to get. So the cop with his arm around is like, he's not satisfied about it. He's like, well, if you like, you know, we'd like to have more information because plenty of folks live tough lives and you don't see them shoot cops like you do. So I like a little bit more. And Gunsick is like, it's like, that's all you care about, bruh? What about the man at the ranch I shot? Why aren't you asking him? What did he do to deserve me shooting him? You already know, huh? Because he's already bought you, boy. And this cop isn't like being called out like that. What you say, scumbag? You're freaking lucky I can't touch you. Well, I can't say the same damn thing. And he pops him in the chin. See these hands? <laughs> so the nurse and the other cop was like, what the heck happened? The patient needs to rest. So the guy tells him, hey, man, I just fell down because, you know, I tripped like that. But he has no nerve and he is not going to be affecting or influencing or lowering his manhood by telling them that he that some bedridden brother got the better of him. Javier knows that he knows that. So they got to keep it moving, you know. So later on, they have a set of battery tests have been ordered on guns to respond. This is see what's up with the organs. And the doctor's like, there's no medical reason he needs to stay anymore so he doesn't they take him back to the police and later on he's in jail later on Gunsick Spawn gets appointed Judith Sarah and she's been appointed by the state to be his legal attorney you know and Gunsick Spawn not understanding how it works in present time because he came from the 1800s like why do I need a lawyer and she's like the state has filed several charges against you most serious being murder especially of thomas dilly and a couple police officers not to mention other things or other charges or other charges that have been alleged and you are gun battling with local police i know the cops are on here and these boys hate when their own get attacked so they'll do everything to send you away so my best advice is you need to cooperate with me as best as you can so he tells him let's start with your name no one seems to be able to identify you, so let's start with that gunsick responds like why don't you ask them girl well i asked him but they ain't talking about it so what about your accomplice you know that girl linda even though she doesn't know that her name is linda gunsick responds like you leave her out of this she ain't got nothing to do with this so linda visits Wahia, and linda's like i still don't understand why i need to be here and why he is like it's just a precaution because i know gunsick response let me ask you though how much has gunslinger javier told you about himself and linda's like well not much not really 
And while he is like he should have because you earned the right to know the truth, especially if you're going along with this ride with him, you know, he dragged you this far along. You have every right to know. So the man, you know, he's not from this time. He'll never be comfortable living here. And he continues to tell into some more. He's from a time when the country was warring against itself. When cowboys and horses ruled Western America today, we called it the Civil War. During that life he spent there, he saw way too many atrocities perpetrated on humans. The worst having to deal with the death of his sister. He's not forgiving himself for that. And before he can exact his revenge, it was stolen from him by way of spawn in issue 300 through that time war. Because this simple man, somehow, he'd been brought forward in time over 150 years into the future, into today's world. Sucked into some portal that had ripped open in the time continuum. He's been thrown into a strange world that makes very little sense to him. He's adapted as best as he can, but he doesn't belong here. He won't survive if he has to stay. He can't read or write, and he has zero understanding of modern technology. Well, he did you show guns against my Instagram, he might understand that. But anyways, which is how he met Taylor. But not, but that ignorance of his is what will actually get him killed someday. His enemies know this, especially one in particular, and that's Cogliostro, who is now Sam, which we haven't heard of since Spawn Issue 350. You gotta check out that issue. You'll see what I mean because maybe Sin might make a comeback, maybe Sin may not make a comeback. So, Linda, hearing all this, she's like, hold up. You're saying Javier is over 150 years old? And while he is like, I'm saying Javier isn't even his name, or that he's occupying his real body, he took this one over after a time rip. I don't believe any of this, says Linda. Well, I wish it weren't true, says Wahir, but honestly, it is. But to survive, Javier had to commit atrocity of his own, and that's dating back to Spawn issue 309, and he had to commit acts of violence he believes are deserved against those complicit in Amy's death. Violence leading to murder, which now you're part of. You'll be hunted too. So now back at the police station, and Linda can't take all that, but we gotta go forward now. That's a story for another time. Judith, Gunsicker Spawn state appointed attorney, was like, Why'd you kill him? What did Mr. Nilly do to you? Nothing, girl, is what he did to my sister. And what did he do? He helped kill her, says Gunsicker Spawn. So Judith is like, You're telling me that Mr. Nilly helped murder your sister? Do you have proof of that? Yeah, I was there. Okay, you were present. But she's not realizing he's talking about back in the 1800s. But Gunsinger's like, Wait a minute, it happened a long time ago, girl. And no one's gonna believe me. Well, I will, says Judith. It's part of my job. Lady, says Gunslinger, you don't seem to understand. It's like trying to catch water in your hand right now. No one's gonna believe me or you, so do yourself a favor and walk away from this. I told you, Gunslinger Spawn, this is my job. I can't just walk away. I can also help you, but you gotta let me help you if you can't help yourself. So let's just reconvene with this tomorrow, okay? So she leaves. And Judith gets stopped by some brother. And it turns out this brother is the member of the FBI. And he tells her, you she's off the case with Javier. Gunsinger spawn and she's like, oh, is that right? And all of a sudden, this is a federal case now? That should have been vetted before. I want to see your ID. And he just showed her his ID. And she's like, I don't give a damn. This is my case. You better have your boss call me. And this ain't happening. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, cop killer, you know? No, it's just a lot of red tape the brother's gotta go through and it's gonna get messy. So this guy asks the federal agent how to go and he tells him, I told you she wasn't gonna roll over. She's gonna start asking questions. So Raul, that's his name with the red glasses on, says, I'm sure your government will handle her, but it's her client my boss is interested in. That's Gunslinger, he needs to walk. And the federal agent's like, I'll see what I can do, but America doesn't like being squeezed by your cartel. And Raul makes a call. Hey, it's Raul. Tell the boss, man, he may need to turn up the heat a little bit to get this gunslinger out. So who is Raul? For nearly two decades, Raul Jimenez has been a loyal soldier. First as a military recruit, then a drug runner, and eventually rising up the ranks to being one of the top fixers for his boss, Carlos Sanchez, leader of the South American cartel. He prides himself on having the proper leverage to win in most every transaction. It's a skill that comes with quite the reputation. Speaking of reputation, whose footsteps are those? And Swan hasn't tried to tamp down that reputation as Raul sleeps, but a loud boom comes in, these hands comes in, and those hands can only mean one thing, and it's Monolith. And Monolith takes him up into the air, and with that kind of strength, that's just not fair. That is just strictly not fair. He could just crush his head like you and I crushing a mushroom or cherry tomato or something but anyways monolith tells him i hear we're both looking for the guns to respond lead me to him so to speak 
And you know what? That's what I'm talking about. That Gunseeker Spawn's recovery in the hospital now takes a twist to turn. What has Monolith got to do with it? We all know Gunseeker Spawn's dad is some kind of high ranking leader or the president of Guyana in Africa. What's all that about? But I can't wait to see how this all unfolds in later issues. What you guys think of the comic book? Comment below. Let me know. Also, link in the description if you wish to add this comic book and or any of our other limited print rated comic exclusives to add to your comic book collection. Support the art. Support the industry. With all that being said, thank you again for watching. Until next time.